and remember what we were talking about. Oh, the only time we would really hear from parents were that parents would call some, either we would see them at picnic or whatever, they would say, that's the only thing he ever talks about. Uh, that's the only thing I've ever heard about school ever, is that he's supposed to go and help someone so learn to read or learn to write or bake or, or learn to connect to another person, you know, whatever it might be. So I think if you really want your kids to develop a sense of social responsibility, then give them a sense of social social responsibility. <laughs> give them some responsibilities that, that contribute to your uh, greater community. And I really, once you unleash the primary teachers, they will be, they will start to use the kids in a really, really productive way. And they will, you know, I think maybe some initial reactions will be like, just what I need is another kid to manage. And we even kind of struggled with it a little bit. And when we started it, mostly I, I went down with them. I was the elementary teacher at the time. I tried to get them sort of hooked in and trained for what they were supposed to do because the teacher, as I said, if they were contacting me, they were feeling overwhelmed, not just by the kids, but by lots of things. So for me to say, here's a kid for you to train, it was just more than so, we could. And we would find you know, some children who were really best for the job and some children who needed help as well, elementary children who needed help. Uh, giving of themselves, being patient, you know, whatever it was. Depends on the uh, severity of the, of the job, you know. If it's something that the teacher really needs help, we're not going to have two kids down in a situation who need help. We don't want to do that to the primary teacher or to the child who needs help. If it's a tutoring thing where, you know, we're working on, um, we're working on uh, identifying sounds and letters, you know, that's a little bit different. We can get somebody who's kind of selfish, who doesn't really have a lot of patience, who, you know, and we can work that out. Also, you know, encourage uh, people to understand that a communication involves more than one exchange. It cannot be, I think this, you say you disagree, and then we have to stop because it's impolite after that. Right. You are not going to get very far, but that is really very much for very many people, that's how they feel. If they've stated their case and you disagree. respond again, now you're being aggressive or badgering or whatever, or if they're on the third turn, they don't want to because it would be rude and whatever it is. But really, what kind of problems are we gonna get solved in once, twice, not the hard ones. I'm not getting those worked out in two exchanges. It's just not gonna happen. So you have to be willing you know, to really argue things out. And I love that about our staff. I mean, they will argue things out and we come to, to like I said, really much better decisions and it's just a much better feeling, I think, in general. Thank you.